Hello and welcome back to the reading vlog. Um, yeah, so it is Thursday morning and I don't have much to do today in the way of like actual work. Uh, so I think I'm just gonna kind of chill for a little bit today. I do need to run to Greensboro to pick up dog food because our local Costco was out. I need to go to Barnes and Noble to return a book that I accidentally bought two of. And uh, yeah, not too much is going on today. Just hanging out at home. I am almost done with my office. I need to get like one chair in here and then I'll be done. So here's the reading plan. I am currently working on Feybound. I'm about 20% of the way through that. I am enjoying it, but my interest is starting to flag a little bit. Although I did read a little bit more last night and I ended right where I think the story is gonna start to pick up some. So like the first bit was pretty good. And then like the last like two or three chapters have been kind of like boring. Not, not boring, it's not the right word, but there just hasn't been too much happening. It's been more world building and stuff. The characters are just kind of traveling right now. So I'm gonna, but I'm gonna keep going with that. I need to finish that this weekend. That's my absolute number one goal. I have got to finish that book because I've got to start working on The Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett. I feel like I've read almost enough of Feybound to give a review, but usually if I read just enough to feel confident in giving a review, then I don't finish the book. And I've pre-ordered this book from Waterstones. I'm positive. <laughs> I'm really hoping I'm going to like it. And so I would like to finish it. So my goal for this weekend is to finish Feybound. That's like number one goal is to finish Feybound. As far as like audiobook reading or anything like that, I still have 1 million books from the library. I keep getting more. So I'm currently working on Throne of the Fallen by Carrie Mount Maniscalco. Um, I'm 10% of the way in and so far it's not what I'm expecting. I'm not really enjoying the narrator. It's dual narration. There's a male narrator and a female narrator and I'm not really enjoying the male narrator. Uh, he's a bit too like, I don't know. And I'm not super enjoying that. And the story is, it's a big book. Okay. Like the audiobook is 19 hours total. And so the book is big. It's probably like 600 plus pages. And, uh, it's not like I was hoping for more fantasy and this is giving more romance, more potential smut. And that's not exactly what I wanted, but I'm going to continue reading it. I saw somebody on TikTok talking about like ways that you can be a better reviewer. And I was like, oh, maybe I should look into that. And I watched the video. And one of the things that she said was that you should review a book for what it is and not for what you want it to be or what you thought it was going to be. So that's pretty fair. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to think about this for like what it is versus what I thought. Uh, I should have known better. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, so I'm working on that. It's not going great. And then I have three other audiobooks. I have Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb, The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova, and Whispers of Shame and Flato by Shadow, no, Whispers of Shadow and Flame by L. Penelope. So I have options, and these are all things that I need to get through ASAP as possible. Uh, because it's stressing me out having this many holds on Libby. <laughs> so, yeah. So number one is to finish Feybound and to start The Tainted Cup. I think that if I really, like, power through today, because I'm not doing too much today, I think if I really power through, I think that I could get through a big chunk of Feybound, because I've already read 20%, and it, I'm only on, like, chapter 12 or 13, so yeah, I think I can do that. And then I've got a ride to Greensboro and that's about, you know, 30 minutes. So that's about an hour of audiobook listening. And I need, as always, I have tons of laundry to do and cleaning. So, uh, and those are some things that I'd like to do today as well, because, you know, the house desperately needs to be vacuumed. But my vacuum, I have a Dyson and I love it, uh, but I frequently <laughs> have to take it apart and clean it 
out because there's just no vacuum strong enough to combat the dog hair. Because we got two dogs um, and they're both shatters. But anyways, I digress. Here's the plan. Sarah, when you edit this, you're gonna remember this plan and you are gonna stick to it. No flip-flopping, okay? We're reading Feybound. Once we get done with that, we're gonna start on the Tainted Cup because you got arcs. You requested too many arcs, okay? And you gotta get through these, all right? We're gonna get through the Throne of the Fallen. We might co-read because I have a copy of that book, okay? Once we're done with that, we're gonna go to the Historian because Five people are waiting on you to finish that audiobook. Then, we're not going to finish that, but if we did, then we're going to go to the Assassin's, Appr Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. Okay? That's the plan. We've all got the plan. Ready? Break. I'll be back when there's more to update. It's Friday at lunchtime. I've read 35% of Throne of the Fallen by Carrie Maniscalco. Listen... <laughs> I'm not saying it's bad, but I'm also not saying it's good, okay? We're 35% of the way in, and I don't know, I just think this is gonna be like a long smut book with some fantasy stuff happening. Which is like, I don't know what I thought this was gonna be. I've never, I attempted to read Kingdom of the Wicked, a couple of months ago and I just couldn't like I just listened to like 10 15 minutes of it I was like I'm just I don't want this right now and I want to like this and like I want to listen to it like I am intrigued the the like the game aspect of it is intriguing to me the problem is the problem is, is that it's just not very well thought out. Like this whole game scenario, I, I want it to be more and it's just not. And like the Prince of Envy, come on. Come on, he's like the worst. <laughs> I don't know, I, I, I wanna finish it. It's like the weirdest thing. Like I want to read it, like it's very readable, but it's not good. Like it's just, <laughs> It's not good. And the fact that like it has, you know, the regular edition, it has a, and a Barnes and Noble exclusive edition with like a slightly different cover. I just like, it's not good. <laughs> but like, I want to read it. So it's kind of like the weirdest thing ever. Uh, I am about 40% of the way through Feybound. And I am enjoying it. It is a little bit predictable. It's, uh, yeah, it's just been a little bit predictable and I'm kind of getting a little, it's getting a little on the boring side. I think it's going to start to pick up a little bit because our main character, um, okay, so she's gotten exiled from her country, her, you know, her, her little, her little part of the world. She's discovered Faye um, the Fae attempted to put her to death, and then an Obe, which I think is how you say the name of the animal, is bonded with her, so now she is Fae bound, and she's like the first non-Fae person to become Fae bound, um, and so her sentence has changed to, she has to go through training to be part of the Fae guard, uh, and at the end of the three month training, there's an initiation where she's going to be like tied to a tree for 12 days with no food or water. So the chances of her surviving that are slim. I know she's going to survive. She has plot armor. Uh, but you know, anyways, and so she's like thinking that'll be my chance to escape so that she can get back to her elf world. And I, I'm feeling kind of the same way that I felt about The Final Strife. I liked the concept of The Final Strife. I felt like there was something lacking in the execution for me. And I, like, I'm like, I'm enjoying the concept of this one, but it's been a little bit on the more predictable side. And I'm, there's something just like, there's just something lacking for me. And I, I just don't know what it is. Um, so... Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with that. And I kind of think that I'm going to read, I'm going to still try to finish it. I don't want to DNF, but the problem is, is that I have other arcs that I need to get to that I'm going to have to leave a review for soon. And I don't want to waste my time on a book that I'm not 100% enjoying, which sucks because I had such high hopes for this 
um, because the beginning started out really good. Like I was enjoying the writing, I was enjoying the world building, but it's just, it's just starting to lag for me overall. So I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep working on it, but I may pivot. I may, you know, start the Tainted Cup just so that I can also be working on that because I need to be able to write a review for it. So that's where I am. It's Friday. I have some stuff I need to do. And yeah, as always, like there's cleaning to do. There's stuff to do around the house. So I may spend some more time on the audiobook versus the ebook. I don't know. I'm hoping to go to Barnes & Noble tonight. I need to return a book, which I think I said I was going to do yesterday, but I never got to it. I need to return a book and um, I have a gift card burning a hole in my pocket and Emily Wilde should have come out on Tuesday, but I don't know. I haven't been able to make it to Barnes & Noble to see if it came out. <laughs> so anyways, <laughs> um, that's all I have to report right now. I'm going to go doodly do downstairs, do some stuff, read some more, and I will be back when there's more to update. So it's Monday. It is time to end the reading vlog. Olive is joining us today. Uh, we did go to McKay's. <laughs> so I have some books that we found last week that I did not show and then some stuff that I found this week. So last week, I'm really tickled about this. I found the Owl Crate copy of The Toll by Neil Schusterman and the reason I bought this is because it was $10 and it's signed and I adore these books. So I'm really excited to add this to my collection. It says that it's a different cover, but I have the regular one here and they're the same. They're the same size. Yeah, so I don't know. Anyways, I paid $10 for both of these. I'm probably going to sell this one. So now I have two signed Neil Schusterman books, which I'm very excited about. I also found a copy of All That Consumes Us. I read an arc for of this sometime last year. I'm pretty sure I read it in a reading vlog. Uh, I enjoyed this, but I didn't enjoy it enough to pick it up new. I found a copy for $10 at McKay's so and it's like basically brand new so bought this I also found this week so I bought a copy of the first in this series I can't think of what it's called but this is the second book it's called feral creatures it's about a crow named shit turd <laughs> or was the pig named shit turd uh I don't remember but it's like an apocalyptic all thing where there's like talking animals in the, the crow's a cheeto attic. Anyway, so I bought this because I'm, I'm pretty positive and I'm gonna like the other one. I like weird stuff like that and this was like basically brand new so I bought this so that it would match. When will I ever read this? I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> and then finally I found a copy of Forging Silver into Stars by Bridget Kimmerer. I have read two other Bridget Kimmerer books and I really like those but I picked this one up. I've been curious about her other books but I picked this up because it's signed. <laughs> and this was also ten dollars so so I am really excited to get to this eventually so <laughs> as far as my reading for the weekend I finished one book I made some headway on Feybound I did not finish it I'm really struggling I'm 44% of the way through Feybound and I am enjoying it but like I don't think it's going to be a five-star read for me I, I think that this is, I mean, it's good. I like the world, um, but it's not an, an exceptional book so far. I mean, there could be something that comes up in the last, you know, 60% where I change my mind, but I feel like it's a solid, like, three and a half to four star read right now. And that sucks because I am I'm so excited about it. And I was so hopeful that I was finally going to like one of Sarah Alarifi's books. But yeah, I don't know. There's just something about it that's just falling flat for me. And I'm not sure if it's reading it digitally. I'm not sure if it's because like I'm feeling super pressured to read it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the deal is there. I was able to finish Throne of the Fallen by Carrie Maniscalco. Listen, this is not... <laughs> This is not what I was expecting it to be. I read the whole thing, but I could not tell you what the point of this book was. Okay, and I know that there is another series that you probably should read before you read this one, and I did not read that. Uh, so you can kind of take this review with a grain of salt, but it is, you can read it as a standalone. I feel like there was some 
a little bit of context missing. I could tell when some of the characters were characters that were introduced in another book. I think that this book probably would be better if you read it physically or digitally. The audiobook was fine, but what I didn't like was that the audiobook had two narrators. It's dual perspective. It's from the male POV and the female POV, and I did not like the male narrator. I just didn't like him. He was like too breathy. He was British and so it was like harder to hear like with his accent and everything. And and it was just so breathy. And every time he came on it was like really quiet. Uh, so I just don't I don't think the audiobook is the way to go for this one and I think that if you're wanting a book that has like some light light fantasy plot but is mostly just a way to force the characters together to have sex then this is the book for you but it's nothing to write home about <laughs> like it's not like I'm going to be recommending this book to everybody I meet if you want a fantasy romance with smut this is your girl okay if you don't care about the fantasy plot if you don't care <laughs> about literally anything else. This is your book. Yeah, I think I gave it on my spreadsheet. I think I gave it like a a 3.25 star, maybe just a th maybe it was a 2.25. I don't know. I'm trying to be like better with my ratings, I'm trying to make it more even. So, this was fine. I read the whole thing. It was enjoyable. I wanted to read it. Uh but it's not great. A book that is great so far. I am about 30% of the way through The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova and I am eating this up. It's dark academia and it's sort of, it's so interesting the way that this story is told. It's told as like a dad, it starts out being a dad telling this story to his daughter, um, but like in little tiny snippets, like little pieces. And it's following the dad when he was in college and he gets a mysterious book. Like he finds this book, there's nothing in it except for this picture of a dragon, like a medieval style dragon. And he takes it to his professor and his professor is like, you're fucked. <laughs> his professor is like, I have one of those too. And, um, he talks about how he like went on, he's, it's like about Dracula and he went on searching for Dracula and he believes that Dracula is still alive. And then like creepy stuff starts happening to the dad while he's in college. He meets this woman and they're like going all over. They're trying to find Dracula's tomb. It's crazy. And so I'm about 30% of the way in and the dad has like left. He, he's been in the middle of telling his daughter all of this stuff and he's like, I've left, I've gone to find your mother. Um, and she thought her mom was dead. And he was like, I've thought she's dead this whole time. And turns out maybe she's not. And so all of this now is turned into letters that he has written to her. And I think she's going to like take up the mantle of like looking for Dracula. Anyways, it's so good. This is a big book. This is um 650-ish pages. I am invested in this. I, I'm thinking this might be like the first five star year, read of the year and I'm only 30% of the way in. This is so good. I'm so like engrossed in the story. Like the way things are described, I can feel it. It's like I'm in the 70s, maybe the 60s in Europe, like waltzing, like running around trying to find, you know, this and there's like people following them. I, it's wild. It's wild, but like the way that the story is being told is so good because you're getting like little tiny bites at a time and like you get like at the beginning it was like you get a little bite and you're like, um, okay, I'm going to need for you to keep going, dad. Like I need you to keep telling me more and then you have to wait a little bit. It's good. It's good. I'm really invested. I'll let you know if I finish it. Hopefully by the time I start the next reading vlog, I will have finished this. I'm super invested in this, so... Oh, anyways, but that's it for the reading vlog. I I still have a ton of books from the library. I got some more. I got The Haunting of Hill House, finally. I've, ha I've had a hold for this book for months. I swear, probably like, I requested it in like September of last year. And I finally got it. So yeah, and then I have some holds that are getting ready to come up. Like Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson is getting ready to come up. Blood Debts, which is an audiobook <laughs> I know nothing about, but somebody said it was good. Um, I think I'm finally going to read To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Paolini. I have a signed copy of that that I found at McKay's. For the next reading vlog, it's going to be very exciting because I am going to be house-sitting for a friend of mine, so I will not be in my usual space, but you will get to meet their dog, Ellie. So, she's pretty cute. 
anyways, uh, but I won't be going to McKay's, which is sad. <laughs> uh, anyway, so that's the reading vlog and I'm going to wrap this up and I will see you in the next one. Bye. <sighs> I finally have a better chair. Ooh. I bumped my shelf. No, you cannot sit with me. No. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay. Come on. Come on. Get up here if you can get up here. Weirdo. <laughs> you, can't. <laughs> you can't climb up there and sit, Billy. <laughs> Here, let me move these books for you.